Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the bearable bull here. And I got this aggressively average content for you today. As I wish every single person in the XRP community and beyond a very happy Thanksgiving. What a special day to come together and witness all of the crypto pandemonium happening recently. But here, if you're part of the XRP community, I, get, I need to give you a brief reminder from Crypto Mason that XRP is the only crypto in history to have ever flipped Ethereum for second in crypto market cap. Just a brief reminder that we've already done the improbable. And that once we overtake ETH this cycle, which I think we will, our target is set to come for the king ladies and gentlemen this is going to be a legendary bull run but one all of you have been prepared for for a while and something else i want to bring up from colin talks crypto doesn't it seem fishy to anyone that binance is being found guilty of money laundering right before a bitcoin etf comes out is there any connection for example is it a way for BlackRock to acquire a massive amount of Bitcoin for cheap or free? Is it a way to remove competition from U.S. markets right before ETFs go live? Or is there no connection at all? And I'm reading too much into this. I've always thought it suspicious how in harmony with coordination all the news narratives about finance as well as the EC SEC move against Kraken happen at once. Of course, this is intentional. It is coordinated. But what is the motive? The motive is pro BlackRock every single time. And at the exact same time, all of that is going on. This was Secretary Yellen's message to the crypto industry. And let me be clear. We're also sending a message to the virtual currency industry more broadly today and for the future. If virtual currency exchanges and financial technology firms wish to realize the tremendous benefits of being part of the U.S. financial system and serving U.S. customers, they must play by the rules. And if they do not, the U.S. government will take action. That right there, my friends, is the shot heard around the crypto industry. If you want access to the U.S. capital markets, you have to play by the rules. But the frustrating thing is there haven't been any rules to play for. They say the rules are there, but they're not. What we're witnessing towards Binance and CZ with his fine and prison sentence, by the way. This is the retaliation for them getting rid of FTX, their money laundering arm for the crypto industry, and the political campaign donations. Wink, wink, hush, hush, we don't talk about that. But regardless, when it comes to SEC commissioners, Hester Pierce has always believed that the crypto industry is innocent and there is no reason for us to stand in the way of a spot Bitcoin ETF, just like she said on Bloomberg. We have heard a lot of reporting in another matter that has gotten a lot of attention regarding a spot ETF, that there is ongoing conversations between issuers who have filed some of these applications and individuals at the SEC. And I wonder if you can shed any light on how much you as a commissioner might be involved in that or really if this is just happening at the lower uh, staff level at the moment. No, again, I really can't comment on that. But I think I've been very transparent that I've thought for many years now that, that there is no reason for us to stand in the way of a spot Bitcoin exchange traded product. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that is very promising. We are getting more of a push, more of a push, more of a push to getting products passed. We're getting more of a positive crypto environment. The SEC had their chance and they failed. I told you the CFTC was going to start taking reins over crypto due to Gary's incompetence and Gary weakening the SEC just like he had weakened the CFTC during his tenure there. And we're seeing the pivot. And jurisdictional regulatory clarity. 
CZ Binance has just been released on a $175 million bond, one of the largest bail amounts in history, and that's something we're going to continue keeping track of as Binance has pulled Binance users, excuse me, have pulled over $1 billion from the exchange after CZ leaves. I appreciate how Binance is still intact. Their new CEO is a World Economic Forum puppet. CZ will be able to return as CEO after 36 months, which to me this seems like a punishment, similar to how Ripple went through the SEC lawsuit. Binance clearly is paying a much steeper fine and much harsher fine. There will be jail time. There is likely fraud. And it's been confirmed there has been some criminal activity. But at the end of the day, this is a massive slap in the wrist because consumer funds were not stolen, like with Sam Bankman Freed. And that's so important to know. Now here, guys, in regards to the rest of the crypto industry, GOP Majority Whip Tom Emmer was on Thinking Crypto's YouTube channel. And we, the people, want a subpoena. We want to know what Gary Gensler knew about Sam Bankman Freed and FTX. And Tony does a great job at making sure we let Tom Emmer know that we got to bring the hammer down on Gary. We're coming for you, Gary. Gary, the XRP community is Gary Gensler's Grim Reaper. And justice, in my opinion, will be served. Um, now, a hard question for you, because a lot of people are asking about this. You know, Chairman Patrick McHenry, uh, he did say he would, well, he has threatened a subpoena against Gary Gensler over FTX documents. Do you have any idea when that subpoena is coming and how can we rally the rest of the House and folks to push the, the two crypto bills through the House? Uh, well, I, I think two separate questions. I think uh, McHenry is definitely an advocate for the industry. Uh, I, it's an honor uh, for me to have him as our chair. Uh, keep in mind, I had Maxine Waters for the last four years. Uh, and she was doing nothing to uh, help us advance uh, this industry. Uh, Patrick McHenry is a breath of fresh, fresh air. Uh, when he brings uh, that or issues that subpoena, Tony, I, I can't tell you, he will make that decision. But it is really important because uh, Gary Gensler has told us uh, that he had no knowledge and he wasn't involved. Uh, we already know that as early as March of uh, 2021, uh, he was uh, uh, actively working. He and his staff were working with uh, Sam Bankman. Uh, uh, I, I keep wanting to call him fraud, so I apologize. <laughs> but Sam Bankman freed. Uh, they were working with him already mm -hmm. uh, in meetings uh, at the SEC. And I, I do think it's going to be important for us to see uh, exactly what the SEC was doing and what they knew. And I think that's documented in the records that uh, Patrick McHenry will pursue. The, the second part of the question is, how do we move these bills, uh, these crypto bills through the uh, Congress? I think you're going to see that before the end of the year. Mm. I think one or more of them will get to the uh, House floor and they will pass the House floor, is my prediction, especially uh, the uh, bill that we passed out of uh, the subcommittee uh, on uh, prohibiting a central bank digital currency. I just, mm. there, there's a lot of uh, Republican support for it, and there's uh, even Democrat support for stopping our federal government from creating what is essentially a uh, Chinese-styled uh, surveillance tool uh, called a central bank digital currency. So I think you'll see that. You may see some market structure uh, legislation come across the floor, and I still haven't ruled out uh, what might happen with um, some of the stablecoin legislation that has been offered and is in committee. There are bad actors and good actors in every market, and the things that are not aligning with our laws need to be handled. Um, but the juxtaposition, <laughs> which we've been talking about for a long time, is that we have Gary Genser, the SEC, uh, seemingly allowing bad actors like FTX and Celsius to have their way and collapse and hurt the market. And he's attacking good actors. So yeah. you have yeah. this confusion on his end. 
Well, it's it's more than just confusion, Tony. I mean, uh, you're right. Uh, he's had all these bad things happen on his watch because he's not willing to do the oversight that truly is necessary with FTX. He was more interested, in my opinion, in doing a backroom deal to give uh, FTX an inside track to being a uh, crypto exchange in the United States uh, before he realized uh, or maybe he should have known already uh, mm -hmm. that it was a, a corrupt uh, uh, business, you know, it, as old as finance itself, right? right? A centralized control operation that, uh, you know, they were, uh, it, it was basically a Ponzi scheme that they were running and they, uh, the uh, house of cards finally came down. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have a... I am cautiously optimistic that there will be a new day in this crypto market. Congress seems adamant at bringing justice to Gary. The SEC is losing power. We see the cracks in the dam. The DOJ and CFTC came together with this Binance news, with this Tether news, with all the news breaking. We can see that the SEC has no jurisdiction. Gary Gensler, the little weasel he is is going to cement his legacy as the regulator that loses the most power once his term is done. And the crypto industry is no different. Here, I'm going to leave you for today with CNBC and the former New York Stock Exchange president stating money will flood into the crypto industry with a Bitcoin ETF because it's just easy to buy. He called it a great invention, a store of value, and right now is your time to cement your legacy, my friends. I've been telling you all the tokens I'm going to ride in the next bull run on OnlyFans. You guys know most of the cryptos I'm most bullish on, like XRP, HBAR, Stellar, and others. I've given you powerful hints and litter cryptos I'm holding on YouTube if you've been paying attention. But more than that, we've started a revolution. Ladies and gentlemen, we fucked the SEC right into oblivion. <laughs> and if you haven't done so already, please get your fuck the SEC t-shirts and my aggressively average apparel site down in the description below as I am dropping a new collection and have also made beautiful updates to the site as I've been bombarded with numerous photos from every single one of you across the world wearing our apparel. I'm going to make sure all of you are represented in one of the greatest movements I think we've ever been a part of. The XRP Army is directly responsible for weakening the SEC here in America. And now, I think we're going to be directly responsible for helping push sound crypto regulation right here in the United States. We are the most powerful crypto community on the planet. And we represent nothing more than the new 1%. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the bearable ball here. Thanks for tuning in. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. Now I'll be back tomorrow with another video. What, In terms what, of our involvement. What, what would a, a crypto exchange look like today? Like what, what would be different about it? Is this just having regulatory oversight and approval? Is that the biggest issue? Yeah, it's the biggest issue. I mean, most of the legacy exchanges are caught up in criminal investigations, massive civil uh, investigations, and they're in a state of noncompliance. Um, and that's just, look, it isn't going to work. We can all wish. I think, I think we, we have a libertarian streak. Yeah. And we can wish that it would work like that, but it just simply does not. And the winning exchanges are going to be trusted, they're going to be compliant, and they're going to support and bolster the digital assets industry. I mean, it, it, it is what it is. I can rail against it, but that, that's, the, that's the position we're in.
I mean, <clears throat> bullish was going to be part of a, I mean, it, this has been kind of a bumpy road to get to where you are right now. How many, how many employees now? Um, we have approaching 300. It's and, bullish. And, bull and a lot in Hong Kong. I mean, yeah, it's we, global. Right? Yeah, it's global business. We have about 100, 100 plus in, in Hong Kong. But bullish, we don't spend a lot of money on marketing. That's why you and others probably don't know too much about it. It's probably the fastest growing crypto exchange. I, I say probably only because maybe there's one out there I'm not aware of. We're now... Um, number two or number three in spot, uh, Ether and Bitcoin, the two, the two bellwethers every day. Um, we're the fourth or fifth largest spot exchange. We're launching futures w this month with a fair wind. Uh, we need a few things to fall into place, including regulatory approval. But we're going to launch futures. Um, so that business is doing very well. Slow and steady wins the race here, Joe. Highly compliant. We have 25 coins, not 7,000 uh, you have you, to pass you, a rigorous set of standards. You know all these people in charge of whether there's a spot ATF. You know them all. They, they all trust you, and they all know you from, from your prior life. What the hell is happening? In, 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 is it something that's going to happen next year? Is it going to be 2025? What's, what's the deal? What's the problem? I, I'm not going to give you a specific date. I guess I'm a little less optimistic uh, of the immediacy of an approval. In other words, like November or, or, even, or even December. Um, you know, you the current chairman year? and the SEC have, have said that they believe that pretty much everything in crypto, with the exception of Bitcoin, sometimes Ethereum, and possibly stable coins, are securities and that securities, at least in the United States, need to trade on a nationally recognized exchange, and they do not today. And I think these two issues um, at the moment are interwoven. That doesn't mean they can't be decoupled, but I think there's a view that, hey, if these don't trade on an, on an exchange, how do we know that the, the, pro the underlying prices are trustworthy? The, the, the thing about Bitcoin that gives me some optimism is everyone acknowledges Bitcoin is not a security, including the the regulators, so possibly the, the Bitcoin ETF um, does go ahead more quickly, which, which would be great for the industry because it will, money will flood in to the industry with the Bitcoin ETF. It's just easy to buy. People believe in Bitcoin. Bitcoin's going to be here. Bitcoin's a great invention. It just is. It is a store of value. I know it's volatile. It is a store of value. Some people think it's a discovery, not an invention. It was already there. It yeah, was always yeah, there. Yeah. The, I'll buy the, that. This, I'll buy yeah, that. I, I, you've been, I you've been on Bitcoin. Of course. You've been on Bitcoin yeah, since, since the earliest days. Yeah. And, um, 